The code for this video can be found in the paste pins in the links in the description. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Sander Korkart and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for joining me today. And today we're going to start with Symphony Farms. I've been hinting at it quite a lot and it is a awesome utility a utility that allows you to check your data before you start working with it. So this is to prevent it from being malicious or in our case, prevent it, the text from being blank or being in a specific length with a minimum and a maximum. So let's look at the exact problem that we got here. So the problem right now is that if we just submit a blank one, it works. Also, if we select, uh, if, if we submit a task name that's longer than 10 characters, it is there, but the second we refresh, it's gone. So the first 10 characters only get submitted. So we want to limit the user and give some user feedback in form of a message to submit basically what he did wrong and what he should ch change before submitting. So let's get started on the code, shall we? Let's get started. So first of all, we are going to create a new form. So let's go to a new terminal and we're gonna say php bin slash console and then make, and then we're gonna say form, okay? Make form. The form that we're gonna make is gonna be called to do and then the entity name, which is capital, uh, sensitive so we're gonna have to say to do with a capital t there we go and we got some deprecations going on here don't worry about that symphony is going through updates and there we go success so what it did is it created a new form folder right here with a to do type inside there and here we can see the particular like items that are on our entity which is task and description now inside here we can add extra things so inside this particular task we can add well, in this case, a type. So the type on which it's based, and this uses the symphony validator. So we're gonna say text type, and we don't wanna use doctrine default types. Text type, symphony component, form extension core. That's the one that we want. And we're gonna say class right there, and then we can add options in here. Now the option needs to be, in, the options need to be in array, and the first option is gonna be constraints, okay? And from there, we go into this array and there constraints is another array. And inside there, we can add new things such as new not blank. And the not blank is a symphony component validator constraints. Okay. And inside there, we can add options and we can, for example, give it a message. And the message that we want here is that the task uh, name cannot be, uh, cannot be blank. Let's say that, okay? And then let's add another one. So move on from here and we say new and then length, okay? And that length right here is also gonna have some options and it's gonna have a min and the minimum that we want here is, and I think I actually still have this in my history. Let's take a good look at this because uh, if I can prevent typing it, there we go. So here we go, a minimum of one, a max of 10, and then a min message, enter at least one character, or a max message, you entered, and then the value that the user entered, which is how many characters they basically put in. Well, not the amount of characters, but just basically their input. Uh, but you cannot use more than, and then the limit amount of characters, okay? So in this case, it will say you cannot enter more than 10. So with that, we can now move on to the description. So its type is gonna be something different. It's a text type, but a text area type. And again, from Symphony Components form and extension core type, okay? So that's a different one. And then we add more constraints here. So constraints, which is an array. And then we can say new not blank. And that is gonna have another message. And I'm just gonna copy this message from here and say now that the description, or let's say the description cannot be blank. There we go. And let's add another thing here, which is new length. And it has some options as well. And I'm just gonna paste those things in here again. So let's just copy this over, except that the max is now 500 characters, okay? So there we go. That is that setup. Is there anything else that we need to add to this? Maybe, but we'll come back to that if 
it is necessary. So now we need to go into our controller and actually start using this data. So let's go and jump into the controller and let's take a good look at this. So in the create, we are immediately creating this new to do. Now we're going to insert it right here, the form handling. So before we start doing anything with it, I want to first check it. So let's get started. So first we're going to create a form, which is going to equal to this, which you can extend from using if, if, if the constructor or the, the sorry, the controller is extending the abstract controller, then you can do this. So this, and then we can say create form. Okay. And then the form on which it's based, which is the to do type. So to do type, and we want to make sure we get the to do type from to do form. There we go. And uh, close that off. Then we can go into the form and we can submit the data and we want to submit the content. But the content currently is a PHP object and PHP objects are not useful in sending like it requires an array basically and it cannot use objects. So an uh, easy way to do this is to cast the array. So that's what we're going to do now. So we're just going to cast it. So we're going to say cast and then array. So we're now casting this content as an array and that's being submitted. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to check if it is valid. So if form, and then we're going to say is valid, but then the opposite, of course, if it is not valid, right, then what we're going to do is we're going to go into that form and we're going to get the errors. Okay. But not like this. What we actually want to do is we want to get the messages for each of those errors. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and do a for each loop. And we're going to say form get errors as error. Okay. So we're going to loop through that. And then we need to get the property name. Now there's a couple ways to do this and the property name being task and description. While we could just loop through those, another way to do this a little bit more efficiently is to just put it in here. So property name equals, and then I can say the error and then get origin and get name. So that is going to result me with task and description, those particular names. Okay. And then what we can do is uh, actually before this, if it's not valid, I need to create a new array here, which is going to be errors. Okay. So a new array called errors. And then inside here, we're going to push to those arrays. So errors with the index of the property name. So the property name, and it's going to equal into the error get message. Okay, so we get the message right there. And there we go. Then we just uh, return JSON. So we're going to return, I'm going to do my little JSON command here. So return JSON. And the JSON that we want to return is this particular message. Okay, let's return that particular message here. So what we're going to do here is basically implode the data and implode is another word for join. You're pretty familiar with it. Maybe it allows you to separate each item of an array and put a separator in between it, like a comma or a slash. And what we're going to do now is the following. So we're going to do implode and then the thing that we want to separate it with, which is going to be a backslash n, which is a new line. Okay. And then we, we want to add as the second thing is the errors, right? And then the level is error, of course. Now, in order to render this properly, however, we need to make sure that the snack bar, so let's go to the app snack bar right here, this particular message needs to be a pre. We could just add that. So let's add, uh, let's see, do I need to add it? Yeah, within here. So we're going to add another thing here, which is going to be white space, which is going to be pre. Okay. There we go. Pretty simple. Like if we just look at the message, if we just track down the message, let's refresh here. And let's, uh, well, it should be invalid now. Okay, there we go. We get a, this error, which is another error that I'm going to have to address. Let's do that immediately. So let's go back to our to do type. And in the bottom here of our configure options, we also need to add CSRF protection and set it to false, which is cross site scripting. Nope. But we don't have a risk of that. So I need to turn that, that particular protection off. Uh, I'm sure there is another way of dealing with this and basically keeping it true, but still be able to deal with the data. I am, I haven't figured it out yet. So until then CRSF protection off is 
fine. So cross crib reference or uh, whatever the hell that is <laughs> turn off and then let's refresh and do it again and now the error messages is blank it's well it's not blank <laughs> it just doesn't show up so the message here we got text and we got level error text is empty okay okay i figured it out it is actually pretty simple the get errors has two parameters that it has which is deep which looks at all the child forms as well so if you have multiple deep layers of forms you need to enable this and then also flatten which is another thing uh, if you want to figure out what it exactly does, let's go here to the get errors and we can see here deep whether to include errors of child forms as well and flatten whether to flatten the list of errors in case deep is set to true. So I'm going to set both of those to true. And with that being done, we should now be able to get a proper message to show up. So implode still the same. Everything's still the same. Let's refresh the page. And there we go. Now this N shows up, which of course we don't want. Okay, the issue that I found was actually pretty simple. So I needed to make double quotes out of this one for some reason instead of single quotes. I don't know why it doesn't cooperate with single quotes when it comes to JavaScript, uh, inserting that through PHP JSON, but with a double quotes, it does work. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the fact that the string where it's getting put into is already single quotes. So maybe that's the reason. I don't know, but if I can't find a reason, I'll put it up on the screen. I'm sure of it. And let's refresh. And let's see. Tax name cannot be blank. The description cannot be blank. And then we add in a lot of characters. And now it says, you entered blah, 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 but you cannot use more than 10 characters. And then the description cannot be blank still. And then if we fill something in, then only the first one shows up. Task name cannot be blank. Awesome. So, uh, actually, let's uh, fill in something here, go over to 10 limit here, and now we just get, yeah, you need to use 10 characters. So, pretty cool, pretty simple, and that is how you do it. Now, I'm gonna just do the, and, and, and you know what? The, the coolest thing about this is that you can just, like, copy-paste this into all of your other things. So, let's go and grab this entire form, right? And let's do the same thing with update. So let's see, content just in the code, okay, so all this. Okay, cool. So let's go to updates. So here in update, we get the content. There we go. And that's all we really need to do. So we just have the same thing here with the to-do class and we just get the content here, which is gonna contain an ID, it's gonna contain a task name, it should just be functioning properly. So let's take a look if it actually does. So let's resubmit this one, for example. And there we go. The form should not contain extra field. Oh, oops. Yeah. So the problem that we get now is, is that the it also contains ID, which, I mean, it can't use. The ID doesn't exist in here. Maybe I can add it anyway, just by going in here and saying add. And no, okay, we get an error. 26. And it says an error occurred. Could not determine access type for property ID. Uh, okay, so that does not work. So you need to extract the ID from here first. Okay, I found a solution for this that is also uh, applicable. So what I'm doing here is I have transferred that array into a non-object using the casting method. So it's the same as we had before. But now what I want to do is I want to unset one of them. So I'm going to unset the non-object and then the key ID. Okay, that's the one that I want to unset. And then let's refresh this. Let's go through it again. And now ID is removed. It's pretty sweet, right? So just unsetting it allows us to go through it and then we can just submit this non-object. Uh, maybe we want to name it a little bit different. Let's let's keep it like that for now. You can discover, you, you can basically the make up your own names or whatever, what you need to. But this allows us to remove that idea from that and then still submit all the data. So let's preview that. So we have unset it. Let's run this again, this time without the do die. And let's refresh and there we go, we get the error. So that is another way of doing things. So that is basically all that there is to it. Hopefully you learned something, hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, please leave it a like, give it a subscribe and hit the bell icon. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well. And join our Discord community to ask me personal questions. And that same goes for Instagram and Twitter, of course. 
just DM me if you have any further questions or want to know something and I'm not responding to the comments. I blame YouTube. I get basically notifications for every comment apart from comments on other comments. I don't get notifications on those for some reason. Anyway, uh, that's been it. Thank you for watching. I'll get to you guys the next one. Peace.